What up, you guys? We are here for our weekly energy oracle forecast. We are just taking a look at the week ahead, seeing what the next seven or eight days have in store as far as the kind of spiritual energy we will be living in. So let's see what we've got. Ooh, I love it. Love it. We've got rebirth right off the bat. I'm really feeling this. I'm feeling like we've been drawing in the light of our higher self. We've been like borrowing from that perfected self timeline and using that coding, uh, that programming to rewrite our neural plasticity and our subconscious so that we can start becoming that person that builds and sustains that timeline, that life. And so we are now integrating those awakened and activated parts of our higher personality. And we're sort of starting to begin to heal and overcome and transcend some of the pitfalls of our lower personality. And so we've been able to start grounding in the spiritual alchemy that we've been doing, the insights and the changes in our heart and in our minds and in the way that we perceive things has taken root to the point where now when we are in familiar old situations, we can feel the moment that we're triggered and, we, and it comes up and we're like, oh, I'm defensive. I want to behave in this way. I want to have this attitude. I want to have this response. I want to feel justified. I want the energy of feeling this justification and going off about it and into a soap opera in my mind. And instead you're like, no, I can see that I'm going back into that old practiced narrative but we're doing a different play now. This is a different performance. Throw the script out, there was a rewrite. So I know we've rehearsed this already, folks, but we, we're on a rewrite. We're on the pink scripts now, so throw out your green scripts. It's kind of like that. It's like you feel the inclination and the, and the, the natural uh, desire or impulse to go in that old direction, that old default setting, that practiced behavior, or those practiced thoughts, or that those practiced perspectives and mindsets, but we're being able to witness them now because we've called them out. We've, we've, we've set them aside and we've been like, Oh, okay. I see this pattern in me, this tendency coming up. And so now I've seen it and I've named it and I have paused enough to see it come up a few times and recognize it. And so this is the practice. That's what that looks like unboxed and, and, you know, taken out and look, okay, what does it look like to break these patterns? So when we are able to, that's why we don't want to avoid our shadow. That's why we don't want to be in denial about who we really are. That's why we want to be able to accept and embrace our flaws and our shadow side and our shortcomings, because if we're too afraid to look at them, then we can't heal them. We can't evolve them. But when we look at them, that's when they start losing their power because we can recognize it when it comes up and we're like, ooh, I don't wanna go back into that default setting. I actually want to take a second here to regroup and choose how to move forward. So this is very good. So this is like this week is we're starting to start, we're starting to start, we're beginning to feel like uh, like we're starting to put that into practice. It's almost like, okay, so it's like we left high school and we left for college. And so the past week or so has been orientation week where we've been moving to school, we've been moving into our dorm, and now we've had a few days to settle in and go find where all our classes are and sign up and get the schedule. And it's like this week, it's like school is back in session. We're starting class, but we're freshmen at a new level, right? Does that make sense? So we're, we're being rebirthed. Very, very fun. Very exciting. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling excited. I'm feeling optimistic. I'm feeling like good things are really close. Um, I have a, oh my gosh, I love this. Oh my gosh, I love so much when the spirit card comes up with the rebirth card. 
because this is a rebirth in spirit. It's not just a fresh outer experience here. It's not just like, oh, I started a new job and then, you know, I feel like this is a really new chapter. It's not just about the mundane things that are maybe taking off or beginning in our outer world. The, the real shift, the real change has come from the, from the foundational level, on a spiritual level, on uh, an ego level, on a soul level. And so that is what counts the most. That's what makes for the most poignant manifestations to come through. It's the, the inner shift gives, lays the groundwork for big blessings to come in and come to fruition and then be able to sustain those because your your bones are are strong the the structure is strong the roots are strong from a vibrational level from a spiritual level on a heart level on a on a mental level on a philosophical level you've been prepared and you're ready for the next level of goodness to come into your life so that you can receive it you can be a good steward of it, you can appreciate it, and you can really do something with it. You can, you can take this, take what you're given in this, sta this next stage and really um, multiply it. Um, think of when Jesus was preaching to the crowds of thousands and they were hungry and he, there was a boy there or who someone in the crowd had um, two fish and five loaves of bread. And Jesus was able to multiply that over and over and over and over again. So if we can just give them something to work with, right? Some little morsel, some tiny bit of willingness, of faith, of elbow grease into the change, make that effort and then he can multiply that. Um, to keep feeding and keep feeding until we're, we're overstuffed, right? So here's an example of this, which I'm really excited about. I think I told you guys a few days ago that I had a really good lunch with my mom, that I felt like our um, relationship was really improving. Um, and like improving my relationship with my parents has been a long time desire and an effort and it's not that they were terrible, horrible parents or people, and I have never been a terrible, horrible daughter, but I think that I, I wasn't what they expected, and I've always followed my own authenticity. I think much to their chagrin in some ways. In some ways, they would tell you they, would, they think I'm wonderful, but... I feel like I've always been at odds with them over things that were inherent to my calling. <laughs> Talk about tikkun assignment. It's like, I am not, like, I'm not uh, overtly rebellious or destructive. And so I'm not like the, I wouldn't have the trappings of someone who would have a difficult relationship with their parents. Like, I want to have a good relationship with my parents, but like... It's just been, I don't know, the, a clashing of very strong personality types in one house, I guess. But um, I don't know. They probably find me argumentative, but I'm not. I think I'm just misperceived. I just think I'm just like talking back, like not back to them, but like I'm just like having a conversation and I'm just talking about the other side of the conversation. You know what I mean? It's just things like that that have just been difficult for us to get on the same page about. I've got, I've rambled, but um, I don't know, recently, and they also don't like my mystic nature, like the fact that I use tarot cards and all of that, they, they've got a very black and white perspective on that. And they see that through a very black and white lens. And so I feel that this is part of my calling and this is how, like the tools that I utilize to do that. And so, Again, much to their chagrin. So I, I don't always, I haven't always felt um, at ease when I'm with my mom. Uh, sometimes when we're hanging out because I'm not sure how it's going to go or what's going to come up or how that could progress into, you know, something that could downward spiral. And so I, I've often felt a deep sense of fear and I, I don't 
really feel like I can let my guard down. And there's a lot more. I'm not, I just don't, I'm not a, a very, I'm a very private person. And I've tried to open up to use myself as an example um, for the sake of the growth of all of us in this channel, to use myself as the example of the workshop, um, how to go through this, how to stretch yourself in this area, how to fail, <laughs> you know, all that. Uh, but I also really just like to not um, put other people out there either. So it's like, you know, but I think that it is for the reason of growth and healing. So uh, all that to say, there's just been layers of difficulty with both my parents in different ways for me and I think for them too. And I like I... I've uh, been praying about it a lot and praying for improvement on my part and in the relationships and for everyone. And it's actually starting to happen. Like I, I, I ate lunch with my mom earlier this week and it was, um, it was a really good time. And it, there wasn't any moment where I felt afraid or that I couldn't, I had to watch what I was saying or, you know, I had to just, you know, be like a version, edited version of myself. Like I didn't feel like that at all. We just had a really good time. I didn't feel like there were any like ominous moments where like backlash was coming or anything like that. So I felt really great. It felt really uplifting. And my, my, uh, God used my mom as a channel, um, to answer a prayer that I had prayed to myself, um, just about mundane stuff in my life on the way there. And it was just like, man, I need like, to get, I need to wash my car, but I don't know when I'm going to have time. And then I like, I need to go get my windshield wiper. I need to change my windshield wipers, but I need to buy them, but I don't know which ones to get. And I was like, do they change them for you at AutoZone? Like, is that part of something that they do? <laughs> it would be weird to ask that. They're going to be like, yeah, I guess I can. They're going to be like, this lady made me change her windshield wipers. She, my mom was like, I'm going to take you to the car wash and buy you some windshield wipers. And they'll put them on. I'm like, no, you can't. She's like, no, please. It'll just give us more time to hang out. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. So it was, a, it was an answered prayer. And all week I felt like a new person because my car is mostly clean. There's a lot of staff on it from this one tree and my thing. Um, but now I have the new windshield wipers. And so that is such a luxury every time I use them and they, and they have sharp blades. So that was so nice. So then on top of that, I know this is getting to be a long story. I was supposed to go to work Saturday night and I wanted to sneak in a moment where I could call my dad real quick. And I don't really hear from my dad very often. Like he calls me a couple of times a year um, for holidays and birthday and stuff like that. <clears throat> and very rarely. And so I decided that I was just going to keep sticking with it. And I was going to call him and just tell him like, Hey, I just wanted to say hi real quick and not make him feel like disarmed that there's nothing, I'm not calling for any reason. We won't be on the phone long or whatever. Um, so he answered the phone and he's like, Oh, Hey, I'm like, Hey, you know, just call and say hi. We weren't going to stay on the phone long. Um, he, ha he asked me about my air conditioner. I was trying to tell him the, the recent update of like where I'm at was trying to figure it all out. And I just thought, oh, this is so nice to feel like I've got a, like the dad moment or the dad's checking in and making sure that your needs are being taken care of and like making sure that nobody's messing you around kind of thing. And I was just like, oh my gosh, it like melted my heart for a minute to think that like if, to feel like my dad was checking in. And then it felt like he was getting really impatient with the story. And then I heard a little noise in the background and it was like his wife and their new daughter. And he was like, oh, sorry, I, my girls have come in. They, something about a mole. I, got a, I was just like, oh, he dropped it off the phone. And I wasn't done explaining what was going on. He was just like, don't let any mold build up. I'm like, I'm trying not to. <laughs> Working around the clock to try not to get like any mold. It's inside the ductwork. And I was like kind of sad and oh, I mean like really sad but I just was like I can't let this make me feel terrible I can't let this sock me in the gut because I talked to him briefly the week before and it kind of took me days to recover um to feel my full self again and I was just like no I'm gonna stick with it and I'm not gonna let this bother me because I've been trying to unblock the subconscious belief of feeling like my needs don't matter and therefore they fall through the cracks and they don't get taken care of. And so I've been trying to reinforce new beliefs 
And it was just like, and it's the, the triggers that came from him, you know? And I was like trying to have this new experience. And it was the old thing again, even though I was trying to be new. And I knew that that was the test this week. It was like this nuanced thing where it was like, okay, you're going to keep trying. He's going to keep being the same. And you've got to accept that. And you've just got to stop letting it bother you. And do your best to know that he is going to do his best to love you in his own love language, which is convenience. And that's all he's capable of. And it's no reflection on me. And, and so I, I got off the phone. I was pretty sad about that. And I started to go down Sad Street. And I was like, you know what? No. And I was decided to flip the script and to keep showing up the way that I am, regardless of the fact that he is still the same person, you know, just because you're doing the growth doesn't mean anyone else is. And, and that's like, you have to be also mindful about when you want to go take these truths to someone and air grievances. It's like, you've got to like, you don't, you can't force that on people it's consider it. It's a violation. So I'm just like trying to be aware of that. So I get off the phone and I'm just like, okay, all right. You know, I'm not going to let it bother me. And I decided to just get my mood back, get, get my vibration back in check and check in with Father God. Father God cares. Father God takes care of me. Father God makes sure I'm taken care of. Father God changed my windshield wipers and made sure my car was clean a few days ago. So I'm going to cling to that. And then just a few minutes later, his wife texted me and was like, hey, we should get together for a meal soon. And I'm like, yeah, that'd be great. And like part of me was just like, Mer. and I was like, no, don't Mer. just keep showing up, keep being open, keep being willing. And even if they don't make any plans, just be nice. And sure enough, they like she followed through. She's like, "What days are you off?" And I was like, "These days, um, every week." And she's like, well, "What about this this coming week?" And I'm like, "Okay, let's do it." So yeah, like the test happened. It was like presenting that old pattern again, inviting me to get upset, inviting me to go into that victimhood, regardless of how true it might have been you know, tempting me to get my feelings hurt, to to create more division right? To lean in and to feed and to invest in the division rather than investing in unity. And so the temptation was to invest in division. And I chose instead consciously to start building more unity. And so because of that, um, a positive change started to happen, right? The spiritual was getting fixed. It was, hey, I'm going to keep creating affinity with the creator and I'm going to keep seeing that my father is a vessel, but the creator is my father. My, my, my earthly father is the vessel that my heavenly father uses to fulfill tikkun contracts and to steward me through this life and to play the role of my father in me the series. But my father in heaven is my true father and my true provider and my true source and my true protector. And so the moment that I realized all of that and activated that within the scene, the scene changed. The script was rewritten, rewrite, throw it out, new script. We've got a walk on, you know, message coming in through another character that wasn't even in the scene a minute ago, right? So isn't that crazy how if you are determined and you see the thing happening and you're like, I am triggered. I can feel myself triggered right now. But you're like, no, I am going to do a different thing this time. I'm going to change the storyline. I'm going to change this destiny. I'm going to break generational curses. I'm going to break chains. And it's so funny because on my, ru my run today, there was a broken golden chain in the road. I mean, like, spirit is so awesome the way that, like, it'll talk to you all the time through objects and weird things that'll catch your attention. If you're not constantly hypervigilantly controlling and looking for it, you can just happen to see things everywhere and you'll just be like, oh my gosh. It's like constantly the, the matrix, matrix is having a conversation with you. 
Uh, Svatasthana, sacral chakra. This came up last week. This came up the week before last week. This came up the week before that. It is all about getting into that subconscious, getting into that uh, dimension of Yasad, which is the astral realm right above the material world, um, just on the other side of the material. The first dimension of the non-material is the astral realm, connected with the sacral chakra, but that's also associated with the moon, the element of water. That's the soul realm. It's the passageway of all things from non-physical to physical. So that includes the coming and going of souls. All of the storehouse of the physicalization of the manifestations that come through. The Yasad is like the womb. The sacral chakra is like the womb of the cosmos. Just waiting to give birth for things to come through it into the, into the 3D. So this is where dreams happen. This is where a lot of our creativity and imagination is happening. Um, it's all about here. And so we, we hold our shame and our guilt and our early childhood traumas and all of this stuff, the subconscious is here. So all of this gets clogged and weighed down. And so then we have creative blocks and we have um, blocks in our sustenance, right? We have money issues. We have blocks with our abundance, blocks in love, uh, maybe like, um, uh, like sexual blocks or like sexual frustration, or maybe like you have out of um, whack appetites with your stomach, like cravings, out of control cravings or out of control temptations, or you have like drinking problem or sex addiction or whatever it is, like these issues can happen here. So I think that all of these things that are rebirth are happening due to the fact that we've been really um, healing this area a lot and healing the issues associated with this area. You can actually use water healing, go to a natural body of water and take an intentional um, like bath within that water to baptize yourself, like a, like a ritual mikvah, like a ritual cleansing. Um, you can take a ritual bath in your own house um, and add salts and, and different herbs and spices um, and oils to that bath and make it a ritual for yourself. Um, but healing with water, healing through dream work, through like praying and asking your, um, your spirit and your soul and the Holy Spirit and Jesus, whoever you want to incorporate into this before you go to sleep, will you speak to me through my dreams and reveal these things to me through my dreams kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> But interesting, it's like we're healing on a spiritual level, but also we are healing on a subconscious level and a soul level, and we're rewriting the subconscious. So it's like part of this week too is practicing, like reinforcing those new neural pathways and reinforcing those new subconscious beliefs that we are planting new seeds for. We're like letting go of the old subconscious beliefs that don't serve us, but we're rewriting what's in the subconscious. It's like our operating system. Okay, what do we have here? Ooh, knowledge and reward. Oh my goodness. So all of everything that we've been through, it's like we're, it's all about to pay off, basically. It's like all of this experience, we've got this spiritual, like we've got a rebirth going on, on a spiritual level, on a heart level, on a soul level, on a neurological level. And we've done so much as far as like trying to attain more knowledge and wisdom, but also like going back and taking stock of all of the experiential knowledge and wisdom we've attained thus far. And we're putting it into practice. We're using it, we're creating with it. And because of this, we're about to be rewarded. Something about our body of knowledge and our body of expertise is valuable. And we've been, it's, it's all tied into like our Dharma, our life purpose, um, all of the things that the stories that I told tonight, they all happen to me for a reason, for a purpose, for these exact things to play out now, right? That I would have like the, 
the right knowledge and the right experience to share with others. So to align with my purpose, it's like your whatever is your purpose, your life was uniquely designed to set you up with all the challenges and all of the shit sandwiches and all of the good things too, and all of the advantages and all of the talents and all of those Oh, those lessons ended up paying off. You know, whatever it is, everything, your accumulation of your life's work and your experiences has brought you to this point where you're starting to align with maybe that purpose, that soul's purpose within you. And it's aligning with that destiny point because we are on a new timeline. We are building from a new self at this point. And, and this is a higher self than we have been. So we're, we're elevating a level and we're rebuilding something with a new foundation here. And I think it's really about to pay off. Really, really going to be rewarded for our efforts and our sincerity and the, the deep change that has happened from within. It's only a matter of time then from when our inside has shifted to such a stable and sustaining degree that then our outer world will then follow suit because it will have to reflect that vibration as well. So very exciting. Let's look at the cards real quick. We've got rebirth or sorry. We've yeah, we've got rebirth. We've got spirit. We've got sacral chakra. We've got knowledge and reward yay i think it's gonna be a good one let's hope so y'all have a good rest of your whenever you're watching this and have a good tomorrow and i will see you on the next video for our weekly anchor message where we get our spiritual assignments and lessons for the week to come i right, till then ciao Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it, then please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn on notifications to be notified of when I drop content. Like the videos, comment, share them. Anything that you do helps these messages get out to other people who need them. So you watching a video and taking an action on it actually makes a positive difference in someone else's life.